the Upanishad series why are people so afraid of being loved i have purposely called it the upanishad series upanishad means in common language a close loving communion between one who knows and one who aspires the master and the disciple and trust is the essence of it if there is no trust the understanding will not come you will not come in the company for this communion this is one of the ancient term used there is a particular environment the master sits down in the woods under the tree surrounded by students in an attitude of love and the communion begins it is for this reason this particular series is called as upanishad series wherein different topics different questions has been and are being explained people are afraid of being loved because love brings misery love brings lies love brings imprisonment love brings slavery love destroys freedom this is how we know love as we have not known the essence of love and this is your understanding and that is the reason that people are afraid of being loved we have not known love as an energy it is a transcendence and people cannot remain without love because love is necessary nourishment to it nourishes you in so they hanker for love they desire to be loved and to love you cannot remain alone because you have not learned you have not been told that the journey of love begins by loving yourself love is an energy it is the combination it is the light when the masculine energy and the feminine energy within you neutralizes one another then a light then awareness and understanding evolves out of you and that is love when the yin and the yang the masculine and the feminine or shiva and shakti the principle and the field of activity merge together or neutralize one another light manifests and that is love if you have known this 
if you have known the essence of this, you can interact with anyone and love will not bring misery, love will not be an imprisonment, whether instead it will be a tremendous freedom, freedom to soar high in the sky, it will give you wings to soar high in the sky, to reach to the far away stars. So what happens in the absence of this? When the moment they meet the person, the other, the woman, the man, all become frightened too because they know now they are getting into a cage. Love's essence has not been understood. Love is not yet unconditional and that can only be when you have known the inner man and inner woman unite with one another. And that is a state that happens in meditation. When meditation attains fruition, love is born in you. And when this has not happened, then naturally you will be afraid of love because love will bring so many compromises for you then. You have to compromise so much that almost lose your original face. And this is the reason that people are afraid of love. And they cannot still remain without it either. Because it is necessary nourishment for the soul. So, there is a dilemma. On one hand, you want to be loved, and when this does not happen, you become against it. And you remember, if love has not blossomed in you, your life will remain barren. There will be no fulfillment. Yesterday, I one person came. So I just inquired about the things. He said it is very difficult to remain at home, he cannot drive. And he said nobody is at home, I am all alone and how long can you watch the television? This is the state of the person who has not experienced love. So he asked me the same question. I said, I have television and television remains in one corner watching me whenever I pass. Sometimes mercifully looks at me, please turn it, turn me on. But my television remains on only if there is a cricket match. Otherwise, I do not have time to go into the same stories and serials which are meaningless for me. When I come inside, I do not go out either because my day's work is finished. I go out only when it is necessary and I have no choice as far as my living is concerned. I have to go out. Otherwise, there is no need for me to go to. So the difference is the person has not experienced the other. What is the essence of love? The inner man and inner woman has not 
merge into one another. The union has not happened and this is the only union that one should seek. The outside union between man and woman is a beginning. It is an indication that you have to seek the inner union and the moment one who has experienced the inner union and he is, has experienced love and when such a person unites with another person who also has experienced this Master Luzu in the secret of the golden flower he speaks of such union when anima and animus merge into one another. He uses the term anima and animus, the masculine and the feminine energy. Just as when you everywhere, wherever there is an illumination, it comes as the union between the masculine and the feminine energy, the yin and the yang. The entire existence is based on that. And it is the merger, the union of the yin and yang, the masculine and the feminine energy that is the essence of creation. Love is the outcome of that creation. But people are afraid in this abs in the absence of this union and they remain and they cannot remain without it also because love is the necessary nourishment for soul because it is a necessary nourishment of the soul therefore they have learned to exploit it if it was not such a necessity then there would have been no exploitation. Love is such a necessity that you can exploit it and make conditions and you can easily say, I will love you only if you do this and this is what happens on a day-to-day -day life. The husband says, the wife says and creates the conditions. And whenever there is a condition, the freedom is lost. And if love does not give you a freedom, it becomes a bondage. The condition is put, I will love you only if you do this. I will love you only if you will love me and me alone and nobody else and I will love you only if you accept my condition then it becomes definitely a bondage these are the conditions and a, hang and a hungry man is bound to accept the conditions he starts lying he starts playing games and he starts being fooled he starts doing the things which, we, which he never wanted to do and he stops doing the things which he always wanted to do. And then sooner or later, he thinks it is too much a price for him. It is better not to be in love and remain alone. One journey on the wrong foot leads to the whole process. Then he starts feeling lonely. So people go on moving from aloneness to love and from love back to aloneness. When they are alone, the hunger is felt. And when they are together, the ugliness of it surrounds. Love brings 
1001 lies in life if you have not understood its essence. It is at times humiliating. One feels caged, imprisoned and compromised. One feels paralyzed and crippled as well. It is as if chained in a thousand and one ways. One of my basic messages is never exploit love. And that will be a great religious revolution in your life. Never exploit love. If somebody loves you, do not bring any condition to it. Be thankful that be thankful to that person. If you love somebody, do not make him cripple with your conditions. Conditions cripple love. Let your love become spacious. Provide it freedom and space. Give more space to the person than he had when he was alone. Give him nourishment. There is no need to poison his nourishment. Do not possess him. Let him be free. More free than he ever was. And then love grows into deep intimacy with freedom. Love always grows into deep intimacy when there is freedom. When love is surrounded by freedom, then love grows deeper. It goes deeper into you. When love makes you feel respected, not humiliated, not destroyed, instead enhanced, then love feels nourished, feels liberated, and then to love goes deepest. And in that, love becomes prayer. Narad, you know, his Bhakti Sutras, the aphorisms of love, Narad, the wandering sage, the friend of the needy along the path is a mysterious existence. According to Hindu scriptures, his status is just like his role. According to Islamic tradition, he has spoken on Bhakti Sutras the principles of love. These are known as aphorisms of love. And he begins with each scripture begins it is a continuity. Something was being spoken and now it is continuing. Athato Brahm Jikyasa Athato means thus. Thus begins the desire to know the absolute consciousness. Athato Bhakti Jikyasa. This is how Narad begins his aphorisms. Thus begins more on love, more on devotion. And in one of the sutras, Bhakti Param Prem Sarupa, the highest form of love is Bhakti or devotion or prayer. Prayer is the tool through which you attain, you enter into the state of devotion. First you have experienced the essence of love. 
love becomes your prayer and the moment love becomes prayer you enter into the domain of devotion first you experience love love becomes a prayer your journey of transcendence into devotion begins it becomes the utmost and ultimate experience of life therefore never exploit love whenever you are in love remember and you will have to remember hard because for thousands of years man has exploited love and this has become his habit now in order to experience love within what is the sutra first of all remember that your body comes into existence out of interaction between ovum and sperm at the subtle level a breath comes in a breath goes out then one breath is complete this gives you an experience of totality this is one way of uniting the inner man and the woman attaining that union between the masculine and the feminine energy the incoming breath in man is masculine and outgoing breath is feminine and in case of woman the opposite is the case incoming breath is feminine and outgoing breath is masculine when you are aware of this slowly and slowly you will find something settles with him and as your breath consciousness deepens you experience something within the peace which is another form of love it is the whispers the peace of the silence is the whispers of love peace or silence is the whispers of love you are hearing the whispers buddha gave this meditation vipassana and in vigyan bhairav tantra which is 5000 years old treatise shiva's concert devi asks many questions questions relating to the existence what is this wonderful universe what is thy reality explain to me all this she asks a barrage of questions shiva could have answered these questions philosophically instead in response to each question he gives a technique of meditation a breath oriented techniques there is nothing better than using the breath oriented techniques but it happened the man cannot go into the raw breathing it techniques so it is gaped with the words and the focus remains on the words then the pure breath element if you go purely on the breath element it is much more effective vigyan bhairav tantra gave that buddha went a step ahead breath is natural it is happening in you every moment but you are unconscious and it happens mechanically in to you so you emphasize become aware of it starts breath watching just 
we have other things that we watch ornithology is the science of watching the birds and their movements but why not become one who starts witnessing starts watching his breath the moment you start watching your breath you become aware of the movements you become aware when there is anger the breathing has a different the graph of the breath, breathing you know when you go to the hospital and electrocardiogram or something is checked there is a normal graph movement when you are doing the sound recording the normal the patterns the graph patterns is of one type if there is a disturbance or a sudden surge of voice modulation comes the nature of the graph changes this is how the x ray or the electrocardiogram or all those devices are studied their movement if there is an unusual movement while this live is streaming and the broadcast is going on simultaneously a part of the screen has the recording device it is recording the light flashes the graph patterns are formed as the voice is recorded the movement is smooth there is no disturbance all of a sudden when disturbance comes the nature of the graph pattern changes so in the same way when there is an there is anger tries to breed into you your graph patterns will change or your breathing will become haphazard so if you are continuing to watch your breathing then you can know that the moment there is a disturbance in the graph patterns means something else is filtering into it and you can bring about the change into that so buddha emphasized on being a witness to the this is the way that you connect to your inner being connect to your inner counterpart the inner man or inner woman and the moment you have discovered that the union becomes natural and spontaneous you have experienced something within it is the union of the inner man and the woman the shiva and shakti and according to hindus this union is reflected by an image ardh narishwar and remember this is happening only the shiva aspect of it why is shiva aspect the brahma and the vishnu aspect one is the creator and the other is the preserver and shiva is the only one who is the embodiment of meditation meditativeness so all this happens this union happens through dhyan through meditation it is the essence of everything once you have got hold of this technique of meditation and if you get hold of 
the breathing and become aware of it, then nothing else is needed. Then nothing else is needed. Then love becomes a prayer. It becomes the utmost and ultimate experience of life. Then you sing Bhakti Param Prem Sarupa. It is the highest form of love. Devotion is highest form of love. Then love becomes union of formless to formless. Love is the union of formless to formless. 